and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is your Reverend, Faith and Current Affairs. Welcome to Irreverend Faith and Current Affairs with me, Jamie Franklin, and I'm joined today by Thomas Pelham. Thomas, uh, you, it's good to see you. Um, how are you today? <laughs> good, thanks, Jamie. Good. Uh, chilly. We, we were just we were just um, talking before we started uh, uh, about how experienced we are as, as podcast hosts. And, uh, that was the most interesting <laughs> introduction that I, I could come up with today. Um, well, Jamie, do you know what? The most interesting... In, in, uh, the most interesting uh, do you know what jamie interjesting uh, interjesting <laughs> um we're not most, starting again we're, we're not, not starting, starting again we've already bit. started now <laughs> this is look, this is genuine anyway, this is you get what, us this is what, you get what we are what happens yeah. Yeah, the most interesting uh i was gonna say um uh <laughs> most, <laughs> yeah. most interesting intros i feel strongly are the two that i've done Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You know, when, when you know, you've done them, they've been. When I've done them, they've been excellent. You see, they're full of verb and energy, yeah, uh, and uh, no um, miss uh, speaks. Anyway, um, <laughs> right, <laughs> Jamie, yeah. it's good to see you again. As always, Me I like too. your hat. Um, Thank this you. Is yes. the, this is the irreverent merchandise. I'm glad yeah. uh, that you're not completely festooned this time because no. uh, it was a bit much but you've got the mug as well got the mug know. as well yeah yeah i mean i'm genuinely using the mug every day now more or less so so what i do is i have a mug for coffee in the morning and then uh in the afternoon i've now got a mug for tea which is my uh, irreverent faith and current affairs mug which people who are watching on youtube can see uh if you want to get your hands on this merch you can by going to the website uh, irreverentpod.com and click on merch which i think will be in sort of the top right hand corner our uh, our child genius seb has, has designed it to work really really well uh, um, and we've also got a cool T-shirt, long sleeve black T-shirt with our Faith Not Fear design on the back, which is really, really cool. Super cool. Uh, don't take my word for it. Go on the website and you can see all the photos oh, like, and, yeah. and order order some. And uh, we, they've been selling this week. I mean, people are sending us photos, talking about how great they are. Uh, how happy Daniel they are. seems to be, he's in London at the moment, isn't he? He seems to be on a sort of mission to sell as much podcast to, to, to London media personalities as he can. What's he doing? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't quite know what he's doing. Which, I don't know which quite media what, personalities? I well, um, he's seen... Um, Hugh Edwards? Hugh Edwards. Uh, Andy Lyons. He's trying to, apparently he's got a mug. Okay, that's good. Well, yeah, um, he, he's a, he's a pub, he's, he works for a publisher. Yeah. So he's not really a media personality as, well, much, media. As, we, as much as we like him. I think yeah, I think yeah. he decry I think he decries such a notion. Um, um, he's seen sort of seen Rodrera as well, hasn't he? He's seen uh, Rodrera as well. Yeah. So he's been you know busy. Has, he given, has he given um, Rodrera a mug? I hope so. I hope so. I like to think that he, he will have done. Um, I would like so as well. Uh, well yeah, <laughs> so just to repeat, if anyone wants a, a mug or anything, uh, you can. These are a good time to buy for a Christmas present as well. By yeah. the way, that's another idea. Uh, Revenpod dot com and uh, get your merchandise there as well as everything else to do with the podcast so if anyone ever says to you if you ever say to anyone you know oh i listen to this really cool podcast called reverend faith and current affairs and someone says to you well how do i find this podcast all you need to do is say they've got a website irreverendpod.com everything's on there yeah do you know what jamie do you know what yeah. Well, I see. I notice that you've written out an explicit sort of intro. That's right. I'm uh, going to read this out in a you're minute. You're going to read that out now, are you? Okay. Because I was well, going to say we're, you know, we're slightly could, we're could, already off script. It. We could. You, we could. You, coming you could, up. Do you want to read coming it? up yeah. for those of you who would like to know what we're going to talk about uh, today? Um, coming up, eco anxiety at University of Anglia. East Anglia. That should be sorry. You, so East you, Anglia. Yeah. I was going to say. Um, Sounds very. Twits. Very... <laughs> Go on, Karen. Twits on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, our new, our newish. We've got done three now, haven't we? Uh, uh, it's, 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 this, quick fire this, this segment. Week's, this week's one is excellent, by okay. the way. Yeah. Rishi pledges billions for COP twenty seven after attendance U turn. Do you know what? It's a, a real, you know, it's a, it's a, just, just quite something for that sort of grief, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Uh, um, don't, don't comment on it now. You're, okay, this is just the intro. To... This is just for okay, people sorry, so I'm, they know okay, what's coming. Sort of meta commentating here. Bishops come out for gay marriage in the CV. Uh, question the rev and much much more but first and then and then we were going to plug the merchandise but we've, we've done, done that it. already yeah we're, I, we're I do script. i do this um this quick um advert now just to say this is not a sponsor of the show they're not paying us i just want to help uh, them out 
uh, the uh, King Alfred School. So I'm just going to read out this advert for anybody who's a teacher who might be looking for a job. Classical education is making a comeback in the heart of England. The King Alfred School near Dudley, West Midlands, was set up to offer a British uh, classical, pardon me, British education based on reformed Christian values and the great books of the Western canon, rated good by Ofsted in their latest ex- inspection. It's their first inspection, by the way, so that's a very good result. The King Alfred School is looking for a Christian teacher to teach our combined reception and year one class. If you are a teacher who would value small class sizes, a beautiful and wholesome curriculum based on the cultural heritage of the Christian West, then the team at the King Alfred School would love to hear from you. Desirable attributes include genuine Christian faith, qualified teacher status, early years experience, maths and English subject strength, as well as being musically and artistically gifted. Please apply by email to the head teacher at kingalfredschool at outlook.com or visit our website, their website, at www.thekingalfredschool.co.uk for more information. And I'll put all that stuff on the show notes for Those, anyone who didn't catch it. The, the head teacher sent a really lovely email. In fact, she's been to our, did she come to our Reverend he's Live a, event? He's a, he, he's a man. He's a man, sorry. <laughs> who are you Good referring to? to? I can't remember now. Different school, different school you're, entirely. You're, you're uh, thinking of someone else. Uh, no, um, the, the head teacher is a, a, a very nice man called Thomas, who I don't, I, I haven't met personally, but I've corresponded with him. And uh, I, support, I support what's going on at school. I think it's really good. Do you know, um, I, I met Bishop uh, Lewis of Lewis recently, Bishop Will of Lewis. Uh, he came around to check up, how, see how things are going. He's a nice chap. And check, um, <laughs> check up, yeah, just, you know, pastoral visit. It's good. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and a uh, pretty interesting chap. Um, and uh, he was telling me about a Catholic school um, where the head teacher stood up for the open day for parents, processive parents, and said uh, two things, which I think were quite good. He said, you know, uh, firstly, you know, this is an unashamedly Christian school. We will teach your children Christianity. You know, mm-hmm. we won't force them to believe anything, but that's what we'll teach them. Though, they, yeah. you know. yeah. um, and the second thing he said was, you know, we're, you know you're going to go to many schools. and They're going to say, we're going to prepare your children for life, but we are going to prepare your children for death. Uh, and I thought that was really good. I thought, it was, you know, and I wish the more. I like it, yeah. It's quite morbid, of, but yeah. It's a bit, like more, it. a bit of an odd one, but, uh, you know, it's right. You know, absolutely no, right. Is, that's, yeah. what, that's what that's what the Christianity uh, is about preparing you for death. I mean, obviously, uh, sort of um, not being the end, not being the, the final thing. Um, so I, I really liked that. But um, yeah, I, I'm it's sad that King Alfred School is so far away. Dudley, West Midlands, long way away from here. Um, yeah, we need we need more schools, more like, schools it, like that. Yeah, sure. maybe they'll, maybe if it goes really well, they'll start a franchise or something. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, we'll we'll read out the adverts if, if yeah. they do. You know, if they want to, if they want us to. I, I mean, it depends on how long the adverts are. That you know, there is. Uh, it's probably about as long as we're going to go. There is a limit. Yeah, but this is this is this is, this is fine. Um, right? Should we do a bit of scripture? We should yeah. Um, so just just for people who are new, let's do the thing about people who are new because we had a very very good response to Pete Hitchens. So so I love I love the uh, love the. Um, youtube comments I, I love i love reading them. one of them said tom that apparently you you do a lot of really good stuff on the podcast but this person was saying that you say i don't know at the end of your sentences too much and you should just you should just end your declarative statements and perorations just end them and don't feel like you need to say oh i don't know do, do you see what i mean i, I do see what you mean uh yeah. yes I, i'll try to you know, because, because habits, you should have confidence that's what the guy's saying you should have confidence i know you're confident anyway but you know you, you should have confidence like this is what i think and this is the end of my state statement. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was one, and then there was other this other person. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes you know things. Are, uh, you know, obviously, I try and be gracious as possible, being a being a follower of Christ and everything. But this guy had written, uh, there was five minutes of just completely irrelevant waffle at the beginning of this podcast. And, irrelevant uh, waffle is that what they call and, it? And that was, and that would give me no desire or in any way to subscribe to it. Uh, you know, get to get to the point. And I was thinking, firstly, five minutes is not very long. That's the first. I mean, if you think that's a long time, you haven't been looking at the rest of this podcast because I can tell you five minutes is nothing. All right. It's nothing. <laughs> we could do an hour and a half of a relevant <laughs> waffle at times. The whole show could be a relevant <laughs> waffle quite easily. Right. So that's number one. Number two, it was on YouTube. How difficult is it just to press the little thing? You know, if you're on a tablet or a phone, press the little thing and, and scroll along. And YouTube even gives you a little preview box like this. The little preview box will go along like that. And then when Peter Hitchens face pops up on the screen, you can stop scrolling and just watch that all right it's all set out for your convenience you know what are you complaining about we're not even we, this is free as well like we're not even charging you for this do, do you realize the effort we go to and then you get on youtube and you're like, eh, i think there are five five irrelevant minutes 
Also, I mean, I, the the general consensus on Telegram, at least that I've been following, is that is that the the Peter the Peter Hitchens interview was was interesting, but the the um the sort of uh, the, the debrief was was more so. And I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that. You know. on that on one person, the, I've read one person say that. Well, that, that's, that's the only time I've had anyone say anything about it. So that's a general consensus. I mean, you know, going by you know climate science and all that, general consensus, hundred percent consensus. <laughs> I, I I think um, um, no, I'm not I'm not prepared. I don't to know. I, I, thought know, the, you know. I thought I thought the the interview itself was really really interesting. It was interesting. And, uh, it was I, enlightening. I've, I've really I'm just I mean obviously I'm just joking about the feedback, but um I really I really enjoyed reading the feedback and it's mostly been like really really encouraging, yeah, yeah. and uh, really grateful. And if you're new to the podcast, we you know welcome and we we really hope that you enjoy this. We're we're vicars in the Church of England. We talk about current affairs and we do a little bit of scripture normally at the beginning, and we have guests and stuff. You know who I want to have on? I haven't asked him yet, but I'm. Go. I'm really I'm confident. I don't know if he listens. Uh, is uh, Nick Dixon? He's a stand-up comic who uh, he hosts the new Daily Skeptic podcast. Oh and yeah, he's really funny. And at some point, I'm going to send him an email and ask him to come on. And I hope he says yes because he'd, yeah. be, he'd be really, really good. Well, we could go on there on their Daily Skeptic podcast, couldn't we? That'd be fun. Well, they don't they don't have guests. Do they, they, mention, they mention us this week. They I've have, heard about yeah, yeah, they mention you, don't they? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I haven't listened to it, but I've I've heard from people that they mentioned us, and you know, I'm I'm pleased if they. I mean, as long as it was as, as long we as got, it's complimentary. If it's in, if there's any disrespect on there, I'm going to be. We, we got angry. two mentions this week on the Daily Skeptic um, website because we also got uh, sort of uh, mentioned as a. Oh, yeah. Something of a side in in a in an article about um, Hitchin, Peter Hitchin, Black Pill, yeah, 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 but, yeah, that was, Black Pill yeah. Which, is, which is an interesting article, worth reading. That gave um, us a bump in our Buzzsprout um, stats, by the way. Yeah, so if anyone wants to write about us on any major websites where there's a huge amount of traffic, please feel free and do, of course, link to the podcast. Uh, you can just do it by the website if you want, revenpod.com. That's fine. Don't need to, you know, don't need to contact us or ask permission. Just go ahead. Uh, right, let's do the scripture uh, yeah. prayer. Shall I do the prayer this time, Tom? You go on there, Jamie. Go on there. Okay, so we'll, we'll begin with the Lord's Prayer, uh, which we will do. We will do the Book of Common Prayer version this time. And so, you know, if people want to pray with us, please do. So let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The, the inn. I always like the inn because it's sort of it's very very sort of um, sort of enlightenment kind of spheres uh, kind of sense, isn't it? In a in the sphere of earth and in the sphere of heaven. Mm. Um, that's what I always think of it being. Anyway, good. Yeah, it's a fun, it's a funny one. I don't really think it makes any difference, but I, yeah. I, just, well, I, I just like to conform Doesn't to the, I like to conform to the Book of Common Prayer. Um, so uh, Matthew seven. So we're doing. Uh, we're going through little bits of the um, the old Sermon on the Mount uh, at the moment. So we're, we're at Matthew seven. We need something else, by the way, when we finish that Sermon on the Mount because we've only got a little bit. We, there, we so. can open that up to listeners. You know, to write in and ask what what sort of um, what book would you like us to look through? Which yeah, would you like? Uh, do, we could do an epistle. Yeah. An epistle would be nice. Yeah, I was thinking maybe the Book of Philippians. That's my favourite yeah. epistle. Um, so, anyway, so write to us uh, referencepod at gmail dot com if you'd like to suggest something. Anyway, here's the reading. Uh, Christ speaking, uh, judge not that you, you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye." Do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. So that's our reading for today. It's a good one, isn't it? It's, like it's a great one. one. I, I, um, I, that last part, passage, I think a friend of ours at college quoted it about three times a day. At times, yeah, uh, <laughs> that was like his kind of um, <laughs> it's a thing, yeah, his sort of uh, mantra, wasn't it? His, <laughs> his, his, his like mo, his modus uh, operandi, operandi. Just maybe, maybe think of him, it's very intense, yeah. sort of, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, in a good way, in a good in way, a good way. Yeah, um, good. Um, yeah. So, one of the interesting things about this passage when you read those two bits together is there's a sort of it, it reminds me, you know, in the, in the book of Proverbs when it says, um. Uh, in 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 the same verse, I think it says, "Answer a fool according to his folly, and don't answer a fool according to its folly." So it's like um, it, it contradicts itself. If you take it as a kind of you know sort of this is what you should do in all circumstances type text, 
and i sort of think a bit a bit like this because there's there's this stuff about not judging removing the speck from your own eye etc cetera, etc cetera. and obviously that's really important and we we try and sort of speak about that quite regularly given the subject matter of this show and the sort of spiritual danger of um analyzing quite a lot of stuff that we disagree with and and behavior that we don't necessarily approve of um and then there's this bit in verse six when it talks about don't give to dogs what's holy sorry my kids are having a sword fight outside not not a real one i hasten to add um <laughs> don't give to dogs what's holy don't throw your pearls before swine lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you which obviously uh means you know don't take your sort of the things which god has given you which are valuable and sort of use them in such a way as to even try and help or enlighten other people uh, if those people are not going to listen to you you know um so so there's so there comes a point where you realize well actually what i'm doing is i'm just um casting my pearls before swine here and i'm not going to do it anymore so i'm just almost going to sort of withdraw in a certain sense from from trying to trying to help or trying to enlighten or trying to share the valuable things verse, that verse six was person. basically written uh for twitter wasn't it i mean yeah yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, yeah, I think exactly. i think that's so often the case that people spend hours and this is why i i left twitter in the end you know because they spent hours arguing with people who were just uh it's, it's pointless you know yeah you, the wisdom that you have not going to go anywhere, not going to get there, not going to sink in. Uh, yeah, but do you, so, see what, but, do you see what I mean? I, I, I those do. Two, well, you, those two things, when you put them next to each other, it actually verse six. It does require judgment, doesn't it? Because it requires you have discernment. to say, yeah, yeah. But also, also, I think a kind of judgment. Like, well, well, dis- well discernment know. is a kind of judgment, isn't it? It Has to be. Yeah, um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, There's no, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, I d- it's not the case that this says do not judge, is it? Um, it doesn't. Well, well, it does say judge. It does say judge not, which. I oh, no, 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 well, no, 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 no. In, in the simple way, it doesn't say you, you're not to be discerning. You're not to. You're not. To, it says that if you judge, then you'll be judged by that same measure. Yeah. So the the warning is not you know don't judge because judgment is bad or being a judgmental person is bad. It is if you judge by a measure, then expect to be measured by that measure. Both, I think, by um, uh, the people who who are uh, you know who you judge. Uh, and also by God, I think is is, is there's a sort of um, eschatological sense of this. I, I always I always think you know, um, so um, so if you um, and, it, and it is a it is a it is a um, something you can fall into. You know, if you if you um, you're going to be really sure that you are conforming your life according to Christ's word before you criticize someone for not doing so. I think. Yeah, I mean the way um, I always think about this kind of thing is like the emphasis in Christianity is about your own your own repentance and your own personal journey and your own walk with the Lord first before you go and start sort of judging and pointing the finger at everyone else. It's not to say that there isn't a time for, as you say, appropriate judgment, appropriate discernment. But if that is exercised without that emphasis on personal repentance and humility, then you, you, you're you going badly off course. Yeah, which is the whole point of the, of the plank and the, and the, and the speck yeah. and the, you know, yeah. so, so, um, so, so it's, it's, um, it's not quite a you know don't don't be judgmental because there are loads of times where you, where you might need to make judgments as a Christian. Um, you have to make judgments about um, your own behaviour as well, um, but um, but certainly about um, what's healthy for you in in in, in and around uh, society. Um, mm. I think it's fair to say. Um, yeah. So it, yeah, I was just going to say this verse six thing about don't giving to dogs what is holy. Is that do you sort of see it in the same way that I said earlier about? Mm, I you know? do. So, 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 someone who is um, <laughs> uh, completely uh, uh, unable to see um, your uh, see, see the see the pearls that the, the gospel have given you. There's no point, you know, trying to trying to feed them to them. It's not. Gonna, mm. It's not going to happen. You know. Um, uh, so, I, yeah. Um, it's pretty much. Yeah. It's, yeah 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 uh, yeah I, that's that's the way i see it so that that in itself is a kind of dis, um it's a question of discernment isn't it obviously we have a sort of a debt of charity to our neighbor but there is a there are many times in life where you try and help someone or you try and share someone something with somebody and they just won't receive it or even worse that they will like it says this is quite a violent image isn't it do not throw your pearls before swine lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you so sometimes you know when you're trying to help somebody um, and you're trying to share something which is true or right or good, actually that provokes just further anger and, and um, maliciousness. And there are times when it's appropriate to withdraw. And that's a sort of matter of spiritual discernment. So, mm. 
I think that's a, that's a good it's a good uh, thing to bear in mind. Certainly, uh, given some of the t- topics we'll be talking about later. So it's uh, yeah, um, good. Yeah. So, so speaking of bearing things in mind, uh, that this is this is a tenuous link here, but we are we've got quite a few um, stories today about. Um, the uh what, what would you call this topic um eco uh you know i don't want to be polemical this early on but sort of eco let's call it eco anxiety shall we yeah. um so the first uh article which i was i think daniel shared this with me um it says mindfulness cause to help uh, mindfulness course sorry to help with eco anxiety launches in norfolk and a university in norfolk which is the university of east anglia is office, offering students a mindfulness course to help ease their eco anxiety it's a six session course apparently um and it's uh, t- uh, the uea has teamed up with mental health charity norfolk and waveney minds the university said that eco anxiety was a direct result of the feelings of grief and distress stemming from the knowledge of climate concerns and its psychological impact Uh, And a UEA spokesperson has said that more widespread support for eco anxiety has been developed in response to local needs in Norfolk, where people are becoming acutely conscious of rising sea levels as local coastal communities experience dramatic coastal coastal erosion. Um, The classes will run once a week and each last for two hours. That's a long time, isn't it, to be um, to be dealing with this stuff? I mean, I've been to Norfolk many times in my life and I've never noticed uh, any sort of rising well, I, of anxiety uh, or, indeed, or indeed the sea level but, the sea, well know. the sea level the sea level relative to the land is rising in norfolk because partly because the um scotland's rising and england's dropping right so after the last ice age uh the glaciers vast vast amount of weight on on scotland and the, the and literally since they melted it's going, going back again mm. so this is so that's part of you know um but I, you know, it's it's not it's not it shouldn't be. The problem is that people are being being fed so much fear uh, yeah. that that uh, um, that that they're, they're they're becoming psychotic. Basically, mm-hmm. it's um, almost it's almost like we've seen this before, isn't it, Tom? Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Um, shall, I, shall I read this here? Um, the focus is not on the overwhelming bleak evidence of chi- climate change and environmental degradation, but rather on how we can act with courage and wisdom during a time of looming ecological and societal collapse. So the world is ending, but um, you've got to focus on how you can uh, deal with it, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I personally, I would suggest that um, that kind of language is the reason that people feel like this, you know, uh, yeah. a looming ecological and societal collapse. I mean, that's not that's not inspiring in me feelings of, you know, relaxation and, and mindfulness, but it's like, it's like talking to Peter Hitchens, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Ruth Taylor, social development manager. Could they not find someone with a bit more qualified? So it's for social development manager presumably uh, looks after their Facebook or something. Um, it's totally normal to feel worried, upset, overwhelmed, ashamed, or angry about the climate emergency. How about indifferent? Um, but <laughs> Skeptical. <laughs> Skeptical. Um, <laughs> Uh, there are many things we can do to increase our emotional resilience and keep a an helpful and engaged perspective on the crisis. But that's not what they're doing, is it? In general, they're, they're, the problem is not is, is the is the perspective. It's not what they want. Uh, yeah. They don't want people to have perspective on the crisis. They want them to be uh, I, deeply, I think the, deeply invested in the narrative. That's what that's what they want. Anyway, yeah, it's um, interesting, isn't it? Because on the one hand, they want to scare everyone and convince us that we're about to experience a economic and societal collapse as a result of climate change. But then they also realise. The psychological damage that's being done, uh, it's particularly to young people. Now, Tom, one of the reasons this is so relevant is because um, uh, of all these. Well, firstly, of the COP twenty seven thing, which we'll talk about in a minute, but also all these protests that are going on at the moment by um, just well, it, oil people. Is it time for twits on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, and this is so. I, I, I feel like I should um, caveat this. So it is time for twits on Twitter. Um, and we need a song for Twits on Twitter, by the way. Just that's a, that's a separate issue because it's a new feature. But but I do really feel like I'm about to play a video, and I, I sort of don't know how I feel about it because because this is an example of a young person who has been traumatized clearly by this um, you know this language, this apocalyptic, um, highly emotive language, and she's clearly lost all perspective. But and I do feel sorry for her, but then she has actually filmed it and put it on Twitter. So, 
you know, it is it is out there and it's apt to be commented on. So we need to be gentle then, don't we? Gentle but fair. Co- co- well, I mean, she's not to... she's not gentle. And not? Uh, cool. there, I have to warn listeners as well. There is one uh, naughty word in this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cough when I think that word <laughs> is, so that so that no one hears it. But if it might, might be easier just to go back on the on the soundtrack, Jamie, and just put a blip in. It might be. Yeah. It, might no, more, it might be more interesting <laughs> if I try and cover yeah, it. I really it again, anyway, then. in fact, I've forgotten when it is. So I think I know when it is. Anyway, let's because this is a family show. And also, I don't want to have to go through on YouTube. You have to go through this whole thing of like, oh, that, is there any obscenity and blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, so. Oh, hang on a second. Right. So let's see. You've got the sounds. The sound is up. And uh, shirt, remember, yep. remember like, the way the game goes is you have to say yeah, stop, stop when you want stop, to make stop, a comment. Stop. I've got a comment to make quite, quite early on. But um, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's begin. Hello, my name is Louise. I'm 24 years old, and I'm here. I'm here because I don't have a future. All right, I'm stopping it there. Now, just to be clear, where, where she is, <laughs> where she is, where she is, is on the M25. Okay. Uh, later, later. <laughs> <laughs> later on gosh sorry i said uh, i i didn't want to crack up uh, sorry um, it's just it's just um it's yeah, so, go on, she's, go so on. she's on there 25 <laughs> later maybe i don't know whether you can explain this to me but <laughs> sorry. later she's on it she says she's on a gantry now what what is a gantry i don't know she's, it's, like, it's like it's like one of those um she's high up she's high one up. of those one of the, she's climbing one of those where the signs are Nowadays, okay, you get them so, quite a lot in smart okay. motorways, don't you? Okay, you know, so, so that... what what I can see is like she's got some kind of cord around her neck, but the traffic is still sort of going backwards and forwards. So I'm not really sure in what what this protest is. So she <laughs> says, "I'm here," meaning like I'm on this gantry because I don't have a future. But one I, of the I thought it said because I do have a future. Does she no, no, have a future? no, no, because she doesn't have a future. So just okay. listen to it again. I'm 24 listen. years old, and okay. I'm here. <laughs> she's looking around I'm a lot. Here because I don't have a future. Yeah, so right, yeah, I get it. I've got it. Yeah. Don't but, have a future. The, the thing that's interesting about this, right, is she's very posh, isn't she? She's got a very yeah. posh voice. So it sounds to me like she's from a, a wealthy background. Yeah. And it's interesting me, to me to to observe, and many people have observed this before, that lots of these protesters are actually very, very middle class or even upper middle class. And it's interesting to think about what's sort of psychologically appealing to them about joining these climate activism groups. It's almost like they it's an opportunity to kind of join a group of people or at least identify with a group of people who um, can consider themselves marginalised who otherwise wouldn't be able to. Does that, does that make sense? I, I sort of do. I mean, it's, I, it's a sort of, um, it's a clear and tell that, that, um, that actually in the early church was quite, um, quite influential in, in growing the church, wasn't it? Sort of middle, the middle, sort of upper middle class Roman is where, is where Christianity got into. Yeah, I think um, that's what Rodney Stark talks about, isn't it? In the, um, um, rise of christianity is it's quite cool? interesting yeah it's quite sort of a, a sort of need to find meaning um guys if you're considering joining a group of protesters don't join just stop oil join the join, church join the local yeah. parish church yeah um, yeah definitely. it's quite it's quite countercultural. and you don't but, have to do stuff like this as well i mean and, you, you, yeah carry on and you have a future like you, yeah, you literally you have, a have a future in in, in yeah. christ so yeah that's good yeah, so she def- she but she definitely she's, should join she's, the church she's here because she doesn't have a future all and right she's, so she's so that's right. that's oh. um can you hear this all right by the way i can yeah i mean as, yeah. how long ago was this written uh was this, did this come out because oh. i mean in the short term it's already been disproven hasn't it i mean unless yeah, no, horrible is happened november to her. november 8th so okay so she's already had sort of two days of future presumably anyway yeah yeah exactly yeah she did she meant like medium to long term i suppose but that would it wouldn't sound the same if she said that all right let's go let's go and you might hate me for doing this and you're entitled to hate me hang on but i wish you would okay no one's entitled to hate her. We shouldn't hate her. We don't I, hate her. I don't, we don't I, hate you. I don't, I don't feel no hate. No, no hate here. Um, I like the sort of uh, the sort of drop, the sort of very London sort of thing there to suddenly drop the um, the, the, the gloss or entitled, entitled to hate me. You know, go from yeah. very posh. It's great. Reminds it's me, it's, reminds it's me of estuary, estuary English, isn't it? Yeah, That's it is a little bit. Of, yeah. yeah. Um, go on. Okay, go on. So go. hang on. Oh, no, I've lost it now. You've lost it. Wait a minute. Here we go. Carry on. So we have to listen to that bit again. <laughs> Sorry, we've had this. Right? And you might hate me for doing this, and you're entitled to hate me. You're entitled, yeah. But 
I wish you would direct all that anger and hatred at our government. They are betraying young people like me. I would love to be there if they did their lawful duty to their own citizens. I'm part of the Just Stop Oil Coalition. Hang on, stop there, stop there, stop. Yeah. Lawful duty to their own citizens. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, it's not against this, the law, Tim. It's not against the law. There's no have oil, is it? At the moment, no, there's, no, there's, there's sort of. I, I don't quite know where she's going with that. It sounds, it sounds like helpful, but it's actually not helpful. But anyway, go on. Also, also, the other thing I would say is like having a political movement that is animated by hatred is not a good idea, in my opinion. I don't yeah. think you should turn your hatred and your anger towards the government and and start hating them. Uh, I think that when we when we perceive an injustice or something that's wrong, uh, we can act appropriately to try and address it, but always in a spirit of of charity and yeah. and uh, a, a concern for the mutual uh, flourishing of our fellow human beings. So you know, I know, I know, I understand her, I understand her her anger, but I don't think that she's given good advice there personally. Anyway, let's let's carry on. <laughs> and gas licenses in the UK. What we're asking for is what all the scientists are asking for, what the United Nations are asking for, the international energy, the IPCC. How much- all right, okay, so she's saying everybody's asking for no more oil licenses and, and, to, and just to stop oil. All the scientists apparently are saying this. And uh, what, here's, there's a, there's a um, slightly strange sounding body. For what the United Nations are asking for, the international energy, the IPCC. All right, so the, I don't know what the international energy is. Is that just a that's just a kind of force in the world that's saying, you know, somehow sort of telling us that stop oil. We um, shouldn't have any more oil. Do you know? Do you know what? It's it's the very IPCC. annoying. It's very annoying when when she says things like because you know she we've already discussed that she sounds quite yeah. middle, middle class, um, re- probably reasonably well educated, wealthy, yeah. unlikely to freeze to death in her own home this winter yeah. due to uh, oil being too expensive now true, um true. even even if we uh, you know which is if we if we literally just stopped or did what they wanted we would probably all uh ha- have uh have a, <laughs> have a real problem this winter um yeah uh, well, well you know, particularly the people on the end of that bell curve who are, you know, who are poorer, who are yeah. less, who are less uh, resilient for whatever reason, because they're um, unwell. But, on their, but open, opening new avenues to getting oil is is helpful because because you know the old ones are in the possession of international states that we don't necessarily want to remain friends with, um, regardless of, of opinion. You know, uh, it'd be it'd be interesting, um, wouldn't it, to hear what her view on the on the conflict between Russia and Ukraine would be. But no, it's not just that Saudi Arabia, Iraq, you know, but we're all fair. We're all for, we're all for Saudi and Arabian. Yeah, Saudi I know. Arabian well, they, 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 they murdered the right sort of people, obviously. Um, and, um, oh, oh, um, uh, that's a spicy, that's a spicy <laughs> comment. Um, <laughs> um, but no, but the point, the point being that, um, the, 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 Increasing our reliance on or, or, or increasing our independence or, um, would not necessarily be a bad thing, even within the the sort of the, the the even within the if we if we accept the overall overarching narrative framework that she's working within that we want to decarbonize our economy in the short term, becoming I- independent would be probably a, a quicker way of decarbonizing because de- carbon um, neutral or carbon negative technologies are actually quite expensive to run. But Tom, so, Tom, come on. This is way right, but, too complicated. You know, haven't you heard their slogan? Just stop oil. Okay. It's, yeah, very, no, very but it's just all the scientists want this. All the scientists, literally every, literally scientist, every single everybody, scientist, everybody, everybody who's even, who's got a GCSE in, in double yeah. science agrees no more oil. Just stop it. All right. Stop it. Don't, yeah. don't it's as simple think. as that. Yeah. Don't think. Just stop. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. it's as simple as that. Just I understand. Stop. And just right? stop. Just stop like that. No more. Right. No yeah. oil. It's very. It's, it's like five <laughs> letters. No, no oil. Very very okay. clear. Okay. Um, but just be in all seriousness, though, this thing. You know, all the scientists say this. I mean, this is just what. This is what we all hear all the time. Is all, all the scientists think this? Are really, all of them. What literally every single scientist in the world. You know, there's the same thing that was said about. You know, everything that happened with COVID. And, all the science. You know, and it's, it's the a, science, indeed, not even the scientists. They're just the high priests. Aren't they? The, the, su- the science. International energy says this. In, in, international energy that, and the science. That nebulous force which um, exists mysteriously in the universe agrees. Anyway, let's carry on. <laughs> Keep going. How many more people have to say we don't have a livable future if you continue licensing oil and gas for you to listen? 
Why does it take young Hang people on. like me? We don't have a, a future if you continue licensing oil and gas. How, how many more people is it going to? Probably quite a lot more people, actually. I think, I think you're way less likely to have a future if we stop licensing oil and gas because we'll become so poor <laughs> we'll, and, we'll, and be we'll be so, frozen. so vulnerable to, to invasion by, I mean, just, by Russia and China. Presumably, her, party. the future she desires is one of menial slavery upon <laughs> a, uh, a sort of <laughs> agricultural you know, agricultural labour. labour. <laughs> with with hand, <laughs> hand-drawn ploughs and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, pitchforks. Yeah. In which uh, case, you know, why does it take all of this? Why do I have to come up in the gantry? How many more people would it take for everyone would... to become Amish? <laughs> <laughs> How much um, more? When will you listen? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Let's carry okay. on. There's still another minute of this, so we need to yeah. listen to something. I think the I think the f bomb's coming soon. I'm on a fucking gantry on the oh, oh, oh. for you to listen. Yeah. Uh. Oh, sorry, I just had a frog in my throat. <laughs> Over a thousand people in the UK died Hang on. in just a few wait, days wait, because wait. of the 40 degree heat, because of the climate crisis. Okay, stop, right, stop, yeah, stop, is, stop, 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 because is, that's nonsense. This, nonsense. this is complete nonsense. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, people die in heat waves. Maybe people die. I mean, you know, as this, this is sort of thrown out there, isn't it, as a statistic? Are we talking net? Are we talking excess? I mean, there wasn't that many excess deaths. Yeah, and, um, and also, but, are we talking about people who are were, were extremely ill anyway and had a very, very limited life expectancy? And also, the well, other thing is, before, you know, I sound heartless, um, the, the amount of people people who die as a result of the cold in our much country, higher so way, much higher way higher and that would get way worse if we stopped oil so you know this is yep. firstly it's a spurious claim and secondly if you actually compare these two groups of people it's you know there's no comparison sorry um, is that what you no that's basically saying? what i was going to say yeah i mean it's, it's, it's there's no comparison it's, it's the except the 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 death due to cold is so much higher yeah it, it, um it, it's nonsense anyway go on go on keep it keep it going i mean I, it was hot i mean i felt like i was going to die did you? Yeah. I quite no, enjoyed I mean, it. Just well, sort of no, not really. But sat it, was, around. It, was, it wasn't that nice. We had a lot of barbecues and sat around in the shade. Well, in those on those days when it was when it was like forty degrees, you yeah. had a barbecue. Yeah, we've got a very shady garden. Oh, wow. Our grass didn't sounds, even die. Sounds, sounds, sounds nice. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Next come, time, come come, come, come and visit us. Yeah. Come to yours next time, which yeah. will hopefully be soon. <laughs> so. I trained I trained my son to uh, to. <laughs> to, to 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 splash water over my legs in the paddling pool. So I just sat there with my leg in the paddle pool, and you just splash water over them in the shade. It was lovely. Yeah. Nice, nice. Let's continue. <laughs> it's fueled by oil, gas, coal, fossil fuels, and our government—they want more. It is an act of murder. Hang on a second. And this—it's not an act of murder, Jamie. It's an act of murder. All right, come. <laughs> Sorry, she, she said the word murder in a funny way. It is an act of self-defense, and we need you to join us in order for this to work. In order Hang on. from how many of us are going to climb up these gantries? I don't even know what Not she's the... asking us to do. I mean, climb she's on up a, gantries. She's, she's on a gantry. I don't know why. So join her on the gantry. I, I think the, the M25 probably... is clearly working underneath. There'd be, there'd, be a, there'd be a health and safety issue if everyone tried to climb up the gantries of the M25. They'd probably crumble. Anyway, go. Up. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Impractical. Come on, be more specific in what you're asking us to do. Right, yeah. Federalist government to take action and listen. How many more people in Pakistan, in Nigeria have to die before they listen, even in the UK? Uh, she keeps looking over her shoulder like she's expecting something to happen. Um, it, it, that, that, again, is an empirical claim, isn't it, which is not is not substantiated. Uh, you know, if we stopped oil, then these weather events in other would places stop. in the world would would stop i mean i just don't believe well, that it's the it's personally. the same sort of it's the same sort of silliness as this uh this uh rishi sunuk's um we'll talk about it in a bit but you know his reparations you think well yeah um the, the, it's impossible to substantiate you know um the, the yeah, any... and, and also what about the other countries in the world which use far more oil far and more. gas and coal, coal like china for example it's not going to make any difference if, even if even if it even if it would make any difference which personally i don't really believe but even if it would it make a difference if everyone stopped doing this the we're not the ones who are responsible for it it's it's massive polluters no, it's, like china and it, we sort of said it before haven't we about just up all that weirdly they're, they're, they're shouting at a government that is generally speaking broadly completely captivated by yeah well we're, we're, about, we're literally about to talk about rishi yeah. sunak at cob yeah. he like, couldn't not attend he had to go even though clearly 
didn't want to. Didn't really want to. And, and then felt, so, felt so guilty. You had to give 40 billion away or something. You know. It wasn't 40. <laughs> like, it's, it's like 16.5 or something. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to it in a minute. But, but this is, this is, uh, that's the thing, Tom. It's like, this is not rational, is it? This, this, this person is like, she's, it's like she's part of a religious. Yeah. You know, it's like she's in a kind of religious. Form, I mean, once it? once upon a time, uh, saints climbed up poles. I guess so. Climbing up gantries. Yeah, like um, uh, is it Saint Ant- Ant- Anthony? Yeah. No, si- no, Simon the Stylite. I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. He he lived on a pole, didn't he? So it is yeah. a bit like that, isn't it? It's quite a good yeah. good connection, Tom. Yeah. All right, we're almost yeah. done. Here we yeah. go. She keeps looking over her shoulder like she's expecting something to happen. We will stop as soon as the government stop new oil and gas. Please join us. Civil resistance is all we have left. The police are now here and they're closing off the road. There's another person down here. <laughs> just stop oil is the only- <laughs> When she does that, she puts the camera over her shoulder and there's just a guy in a high vis jacket just standing by the side of the motorway. It's not at all clear that the police are actually there or anything's happening. And then there's a break and then she's only just- only chance of a future that we have left. Just stop another person. So she says, down here. there's another person there. Just stop oil is the only chance of a future that we have left. Just stop oil. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think so. I, d- I have to say, I don't think Just Stop Oil is the only chance we have for a future. Uh, if it is, we're in big trouble. That's that's uh, that's all I've got to say about that. Um, no, poor, no. poor girl, poor girl, and people no. like her. I mean, this eco anxiety thing. I mean, it is real, isn't it? It's quite it's quite extraordinary amount of eco anxiety to cause you to climb up poles in the M25. Gant- yeah. on the yeah. M25. Uh, yeah. So I I do feel. I'm not entirely convinced of this thing about the police. There were no police in the video, and there was just one man. Well, I mean, yeah. well, he, could been, he could have been out for a walk. What I don't yeah. understand is why the because the police make things worse because they turn up and they shut down the M25 because the people now quite clear the M25 working quite happily with the people out of the gantry. Just leave them there. Just ignore yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what what is she sort of is she threatening? Like I'm going to jump on the M M25 or something? It, no, just... Yeah, I don't. Not sure. Not sure. Um, um, no, but I mean, in all seriousness, you can see like the psychological damage this this um rhetoric is doing to to young people and um you know they they clearly think they're they're clearly convinced that this kind of behavior is genuinely really significant and important yeah. Yeah. but they are they are delusional unfortunately well, unfortunately so is rishi sunak as our next article shows uh, so rishi sunak has confirmed that the uk will stick to its goal of providing 11.6 billion in climate funding and will triple its funding on adaptation to 1.5 billion this is this should, we, should we listen should we listen to it i've got it oh I've do we it. have to okay go on then go on then. So it's, it's well i was going to say it's quite interesting it's not interesting at all but it's nice to have things to listen to go on uh, shall i listen to it we could do the same thing i mean this isn't twits on twitter it's only a short clip but here we go central hey, twitter, to twitter. all our efforts is honoring our promises on climate finance this is him in Sharm i know that for many finances are tough right now the pandemic all but broke not for him the global economy and before coming here today, it wasn't the pandemic that broke the global economy. It was you, yeah, Rishi. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I spent last week working on the difficult decisions needed to ensure confidence and economic stability in my own country. Do you think he's going to sell what one of his one of his um, houses in in Tahiti or something? Who knows? Who knows? Let's go. But I, can- I don't know why Tahiti. I just made that up. Could be could be anywhere. Couldn't it? Could could be the Bahamas tell you today that the United Kingdom is delivering on our commitment of 11.6 billion pounds. I consider that a stunning piece of rhetoric because he starts by saying, I know it's really hard for everyone and they're really, really struggling and the, the, the pandemic have broke the economy and I'm making some really difficult decisions. But nevertheless, we're still going to give 11.6 billion pounds in climate funding to to what? It's not even clear what where, where this money's going. It's like it's like he sort of acknowledges it, but he doesn't. It doesn't in any way change the fact that he's going to give this huge amount of money away uh, for this this um, this delusionary political agenda. And also, and as part of this, we will now triple our funding on adaptation to 1.5 billion pounds by 2025. But let me tell you why. I don't really, I don't really want to hear why. To be honest with you, um, it's to me, it's very, very. So one of the things I would ask in in this kind of thing is, is um, what actually is climate funding, and what is adaptation? I mean, that's literally all it says. Do you know what adaptation is, Tom? I think it's like um, 
Oh dear, it's like um, where you where you where you where you pay. I don't really know. Pay, well, it's, it's it's a sensible in, in a sense. If it's if it's what I think it is, it's sort of making sure that we we develop technologies that allow us to live with the changing climate, which makes sense because we know that the climate is probably changing. Whether we have anything to do with it is another matter. But you know, um, yeah. What what um. I just find this whole thing, you know, like Rishi there, like, you know, with his sort of concerned face on and, you know, look, looking all serious that he didn't want to go to this conference. He didn't consider it was important enough to go to it. And then he then he's pressurized into it. So he makes a U-turn, then he goes and then he expects us to take this 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 seriously when you know blatantly he's doing it because he considers it to be politically expedient to make this u-turn it's just you know it's just redolent of this complete lack of any sort of serious conviction of any mainstream politics at the moment i just i just find it i just think it's well i mean i keep on using the word delusional but i think that's that's what it is i think these people are living in a in a fantasy world i mean what do you think tom yeah yeah i don't know it's not delusion it's just they're just i don't i I can't really explain it jamie i can't really explain any of it um they've been they're they're believing their own their own sort of nonsense in the end aren't they well i think it comes back to what we were talking about with p titchens last week is like when you when you don't have an, an actual christian framework to to work from you start to sort of invent other religions and religious sensibilities and that's what i think about this climate thing it's like a it's like a god it's an idol isn't it which we're going to sacrifice everything to we're going to sacrifice our elderly we're going to sacrifice our poor we're going to sacrifice our economy it's all of this money is just going to be just going to be poured into a black hole because we have this this abstract notion that if we spend all this money on 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 unnamed things in the in the area of climate funding and adaptation that we're going to be able to change the weather such that we won't have extreme weather events and that the world will be a better place i just think it's it's in it's insane and as part of the insanity um we are now talking about um seriously seriously talking about paying reparations to well, other yeah, that, countries for being the first country to industrialize which is which is madness because of course the industrial revolution is what enabled us to um end slavery uh end the menial drudgery work of uh simply subsistence farming which 90 percent of the world did uh until until then well pretty much you know 95 <clears> percent <throat> probably of, of england was was set you know subsistence farming there wasn't much more else you can do um you know, it, the industrialization and the agricultural industrial revolution as well, which of course is um, the agricultural re- revolution precedes slightly, but is it goes hand in hand with the has has meant that the world can feed enough people, um, so that the, the the increasing population hasn't been an issue. Um, well, yeah. it's, it's it's a bit like I mean, it didn't um, uh, there's, there's you know it's, it's a bit like what did the Romans do for us? Well, you know what did the agric- what did the industrial revolution do for us? An awful lot is the answer. Yeah, I mean, it's true, and and in some ways, I mean, I I I, I think it's a I think it's a complicated matter because I do think the industrial revolution brought about significant amount of human misery in in all sorts of ways, and uh, in in lots of ways also it was a kind of um, you know it was it was something which accelerated and radicalized modernity and therefore secularism and and this sense of this godless. Uh, world that we live in now so I, I wouldn't i personally wouldn't say it's a sort of unalloyed good but nevertheless um it, there are clearly some good things about it and and i think the most important thing is the people who are alive now us you know, we've got nothing to do with it you know we didn't do it we didn't invent the the steam engine did we it wasn't me it wasn't well, you. i mean the, the claim will be that we we benefited from it to such a point that that we you know that we are in some way responsible for it but um I, I, but every, everyone's benefited but everyone has it. across the whole world the every benefits, single country the benef- i mean which countries don't have trains uh, you yeah. know it's, it's cars or, yeah or, or factories or machines it's just it's so unbelievably stupid it's it just it's it's just again the world has gone absolutely crazy to even be considering something like this that's not the way that that guilt works you it doesn't get transferred down the generations uh, you know we don't owe something to people in pakistan on the basis that one of our distant ancestors invented the steam engine that's ridiculous i mean i'm not saying we don't owe something to our you know our brothers and sisters in, in pakistan but it's not for that reason that's just a stupid yeah. Anyway, uh, 
we should we should talk about the next thing. So we're, we're running towards uh, half. You know, this is going to be a biggie. It's a biggie. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. So um, um, we're going to talk now. So this is more like church stuff, isn't it? So we've done yeah. the we've done the big we've done the big madness in the in the culture. Well, it's now, also uh, the other thing that's happening right now is the midterm elections, but we don't know the outcome, so there's no point commenting on it. But uh, well, it looks like Ron DeSantis has done well, isn't it? But we'll maybe talk about that next week. Um, we'll have to get uh, get a, get the old friend of our show back on again to talk about American politics. Um, yeah. Esther, uh, Esther. Yeah, because yeah. We, should, we should try and do that actually. Um, um, yeah, all these people are going to get on. So, shall I set this up, Tom? Um, yeah, go. On. Let's <laughs> let's do this. So, so basically, so it's hard to say, isn't it? Because um, you know, there there are all sorts of people who listen to the show, but let's let's assume that most people um, don't. They're not entirely au fait with the situation in the Church of England. So, I think it's fair to say that in the Church of England, there are lots and lots of different theological tribes or groups and 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 viewpoints, and it's it's a somewhat contested space if you want to use that kind of language um and there's all sorts of historical reasons for that um the issue of uh, same-sex marriage and uh, homosexual relationships has obviously been an area of disagreement and controversy for a number of years within the church and last week i think it was on was it on thursday um there was a bit of a first because the uh bishop of oxford Stephen Croft came out with a it was a book it was like a book he'd written wasn't it and um, it's a sort of long essay short book yeah pamphlet a statement statement pamphlet. say basically saying now's the time that we um, we should have um, same sex marriage in the Church of England and and I think also the other important thing to say about the context is that it's within the context of this ongoing living in love and faith dialogue and dialogue some kind of di- ongoing di- dialogue with the bishops on this issue is isn't it Tom. Well, I mean, um, the living and loving faith process started a couple of years ago now, uh, and it's a um, an attempt to get the church to think about um, predominantly two different ways of looking at scripture. Um, really, is what it boils down to. And in the end, this is a scriptural issue rather than a cultural one. Um, uh, the the sort of the debates around this in the church have been going on for many years. Um, I think it's ninety three was uh, was a was a document called. Um, uh, issues in human sexuality. It's very dated now, but um, still, um, uh, still, until uh, it was still remains the the, the predominant de- uh, uh, um, document that deals with it from the from the bishops. It's um, the most authoritative Episcopal document on the on the matter. Uh, yeah. We've had we've had a number of different uh, th- attempts over the years to talk about different things. Um, Living in loving faith was an attempt to sort of bring all this to a head. The bishops sort of stopped trying to kick it into the long gla- grass, which had been the tactic for a while. Um, the um yeah and, sorry, uh, you know, and one, i say that i say that as i say that as an orthodox as someone who doesn't want change you know it's quite obvious that the, the bishops have been avoiding uh coming down one way or another they've sat on a fence for a very long time mm. on this uh and i don't think that's really an acceptable place to be um because for me it's quite clear where the church should be uh so, and I so think- tom just before we go into like opinions and stuff i'm just just to set the context as clearly as possible this I, and i'm not sure i said this earlier this is a significant moment because this is the first serving bishop to have said this not quite uh, no, no. Well, i was going to say nick holton did didn't he have yeah, he did. 10, 10 years ago but that wasn't in the context of um, a serious movement in this sermon. So the, and- so the bishops have had just had three meetings where they've been talking about it together, uh, having had Living in Love and Faith as a listening exercise. This was sort of uh, a summary meetings. And they've got another two, I think. Um, and then they may or may not bring proposals to General Synod in February, um, to uh, General Synod being the governing body of the church. Um so um the final of the first three three sort of meetings um was last Wednesday and Bishop Oxford released this publicly on Thursday, though he had given the bishops present a uh, copy prior to that, I believe, he said. Um and um also um another thing to say is that the day after John Inge, who's the Bishop of Worcester, and his suffragan Martin, who's the Bishop of Dudley, released on twitter and maybe somewhere else as well a letter in which basically they said the same thing um one one of the things one of the things i i I shouldn't laugh but one of the things i say about it is um it's it's interesting both both john inch and the bishop of oxford stephen croft have said uh you know there'll be provision for people who don't agree with this and won't go with it etc and he writes here 
Where is it? Yeah, yeah. We recognize that others feel very differently from us, and we believe that the right of every Christian to act and minister according to his or her own, co- her own conscience on this matter must be protected. If the outcome of the LLF living in love and faith process is what we hope it will be, i.e. gay marriage, those who hold to a traditional view should be honored, and they certainly will be in this diocese as long as we remain your bishops. The only thing that's like slightly not reassuring about that is that I think John Inge is 67, so he's he's not going to be the bishop for very long. Um, so I don't know whether the wording was... Um, I'm sure he didn't mean to imply that, but he's not going to be the bishop for that long. So it sort of raises the question of what will happen when a when a less accommodating bishop um, becomes the bishop of Worcester. But sorry, John, yeah. do, you, do you want to? Do you want so, to so, um, so the so the um, in, in the end, uh, this whole issue comes down to a um, how you read scripture. Uh, is scripture authoritative in in all? ways so um so the uh and it's you know basically dr stephen croft who's the bishop of oxford um would argue that the scripture no longer speaks authoritatively uh to our culture um in the matters uh, Tom, i'm not sure that's true is it I, I just... well, effectively it does because because he because he has to say something like that he basically says that the, the cultural understanding of, of homosexuality has moved on from where from from the from the understanding that they had in the bible and so therefore it no longer speaks to our culture uh, I, don't, of... I don't think that's what he said was it i think it's effectively, I mean, it's effectively yeah, what he says I, oh yeah but yeah okay but i'm just trying to take you know just take the letter yeah. um of, of what he said um i'm just, sorry i'm just trying to i always spell his name with a ph but it's a v isn't it i was one of strange strange spelling i think what he said and i've not read his i've not read the document because you have to pay for it i've just read the the, the press release or the twitter release or whatever but i think basically what he said is um that he used to have a traditional view on this and um as a result of speaking with and having experiences of knowing gay people he decided to go back and sort of relook at the scripture and see if there was another another way of thinking about it. And indeed, that is what he's found. And now he's convinced that um, there's, you know, sufficient, um, I don't know, wriggle room in in the way you might um, interpret scripture to to allow for this way of thinking about things or something like that. I don't yeah, think well, he would, I don't think he would say that the culture is you know sort of supervenes upon the scripture to no, be, it, it to be just, him. this is this is quotation from uh in paul's blog um and this is p- from page 34 of stephen's uh pamphlet yeah has our understanding of same-sex desire and attraction can change significantly because of advances in science social science and culture such that we would now offer a more nuanced inter- interpretation for gender and same gender relations in my view the case can be made and in the light of that increased and better understanding justifies a careful revision to the doctrine and teaching of the church he's saying Saying, mm. there's been no mistake about it. He's saying that our changed, uh, that our that our experience uh, and our um, understanding of humanity supersedes that of the established doctrine of the church, which is which is which is rooted in the Bible and the, the understanding of those historic texts. Um, that's what he has to say because he can't say anything else because the Bible is quite clear on the matter. Um, um, well, yeah, okay. So I mean, I'm just, I'm just. Um playing devil's advocate here obviously but in my experience the way that people of more liberal position argue is that um you know all of these things kind of need to be taken together and um you know scripture isn't as isn't perhaps as clear as it's interpreted interpreted to have been and that in the light of our new knowledge we can sort of return to scripture and come out with a sort of more generous interpretation i'm not saying i I agree with that i mean they're welcome to say that sort of thing jamie they of course they can but that's not the doctrine of the anglican church which is which is more more akin to hooker uh, who we commemorated a couple of days ago, the great, the great sort of apologist of the um, who died in 1600, um, who, um, who who's uh, um, who's clear that the the, the and the 39 articles as well are clear that the bedrock of uh, authority in the Church of England is Scripture, and that we can only interpret things from that. You know, they're, they're going the other way, aren't they? They're saying uh, here is um, here is a um, a thing about. Um, uh, modern life and now we need to read that back into the scriptures and see if we can we can do it whereas whereas that's not the way around that the church has ever such thing has ever interpreted scripture um, um yeah 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 sure um in in a, in a way 
I mean, all I was doing, all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to establish like what is actually being said. What's um, said? Well, what's and, being said is is effectively that the, when it, the the crux of it is the culture has changed. The church yeah. no longer speaks to culture, so therefore we need to change what the church says in order to engage with culture. That's what the core of the argument is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so he um, says uh, at one point in his in his uh, document, he he essentially says we are seen to inhabit a different moral universe to the culture around us, and therefore we need to close the gap between us and and the culture. Now. Um, just uh, to my mind you know we we uh, to my mind the 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 important thing is that you know where the church is at as a result of this but uh, one one comment um to make about that is that in terms of a sort of hermeneutic for you know theology and and reading scripture it's not a very good one uh, for for all sorts of reasons regardless of what you think about this issue it should be obvious that um, the 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 moral paradigms or the ethical paradigms of the culture around us are not, for some for some reason, authoritative and and ha- and they don't have an authoritative bearing or weight um, upon the church. I mean, it, for example, yeah. if you were in a culture with an extreme patriarchy, like there is in um, certain places in in Asia, you wouldn't look around at that as a Christian and say, well, this is great that women are, you know, forced to behave in this way and, you know, that they're subjugated by men and that they have no freedom and they, they have no moral agency. Uh, and they, they think of our sort of um, doctrine of marriage as, as, as hopelessly liberal. Therefore we're going to sort of make our, make our religion conform to this, this, yeah. this extreme patriarchy. It's, 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 I mean, this is the point that uh, the chap called Joshua Pendock makes on Twitter, isn't it? He says, I look with interest to seeing the bishop's defense of extreme patriarchy in the Middle East, the defense of the caste system in India, of polygamy in Africa, for ensuring that Anglicanism remains consistently and universally against radical cultural dislocation. Um, and, and I think Archbishop Cramner, <clears throat> who we're going to talk about, this sort of makes quite a good sort of um, kind of... Uh, uh, use, uh, pulls out some work by Richard Niebuhr, um, who uh, outlines a number of different ways the church can interrelate with the culture, and um, uh, the essentially the orthodox and historical and uh, and traditional way of the church relating with culture is not that culture is un- unanimously good or that it's unanimously bad. It is that the the the, the innovations that culture bring need to be weighed against the Bible to be tested. That's that's yeah. the key, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. so Augustine Augustine can use um, sort of the Greek um, pagan uh, uh, philosophers in in some of his attemptings to understand the nature of God, but in order to do that, he has to demonstrate how they, or demonstrates how they are um, how they are sound in, from a biblical pers- perspective, uh, you know, and, and yeah. he and he he relates it to the. Um, to the plundering of uh, of Egypt by the by the Jews, the idea that the, the jewels of c- culture can be taken, but only if they're only, only if they're tested against the Bible. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's um, a good book, by the way, Christ Christ and Culture um, by um, Richard Niebuhr. But um, the um, yeah, so so the problem I have with this argument, and I think this argument can be applied to other areas as well, um, is that um, if you're going to say that you know Western secular culture um is 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 basically moving in the right direction the church has to sort of catch up with it 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 strikes me as an incredibly kind of uh imperialist i mean i have a i have other problems with this by the way but this is a problem with it is it 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 strikes me as an incredibly kind of imperialistic way of thinking about your own culture doesn't it it's like well our culture is right our culture is the standard and therefore anyone who disagrees with it has to conform to it including the church and um, that's that's so, not that's not the way I see it at all. I mean, there are all sorts of issues in our culture which are, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, stand under the judgment of God um, because yeah. they're they're absolutely wrong. And one of them would be the the practice of abortion, which I consider to be the murder of of innocent and helpless children. So is 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 so say we've got you know we've got a really strong movement towards um, you know uh, late term abortion. And then the culture starts to think, well, you know, this the, the church is a little bit regressive on on this. Uh, does that mean that then we have to start, you know, supporting late term abortion because the culture sees us as as immoral? I mean, it's 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 the wrong it's the wrong way around. It's yeah. like this image that I use all the time. It's like we are not the thermometer; we are the thermostat. And and the fact that regardless of what you think about this issue, and and clearly, Tom, you and I um, uh, have a have a have a traditional view of it. Um, but but this apart from anything else, this demonstrates like a complete loss of confidence in the Christian faith because we're we're no longer able to say no. This is this is what Christianity is, 
And the culture may hate that, but ultimately we're not here to conform ourselves to the culture. We're here no. such that the culture should and, conform to us. And there's and it's there are warnings about this throughout the Bible. I mean, um, the the church in Laodicea, for example, there's there's we've we've been we've been through in our talkings through um, Revelation. Uh, Jesus himself says that uh, people will hate you. You know, don't think I come to bring peace. I come to bring division. Yeah, it's about on the whole Bible, the whole Bible um, is about this. In the, in, yeah, in, yeah. in morning prayer readings, uh, the lectionary, it's been about the book Daniel, of Daniel. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't Daniel, come. Yeah, so do I. But you don't come away from that book thinking, oh, wasn't it great how Daniel and his friends conformed completely to the Babylonian culture? And then and then they all came to see that the God of the Jews was, was the, the right God. It's completely the other way around. Daniel and his friends are faithful to the God of Israel. And and then the God of Israel judges the powerful rulers of Babylon and they are humbled and by and large they repent and yeah. they 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 come to, to worship the true God. It's not through compromise and conformity that that happens. But that, I think, but, sorry, sorry, carry on, carry on. But the, the problem comes, you know, um, I mean, there is going to be a, a sort of crunch problem in the Church of England reasonably soon. And, and, I, and I'm not going to start predicting where the Church of England is going to go. I doubt that Stephen's proposals will um will will, will be um will be adopted by synod not least because um they are changes in doctrine and therefore require a, a super majority which there so, is So yeah not, just to be clear um, they they need a two thirds majority and yeah. the overwhelming <laughs> consensus of um you know people who know about this kind of thing is that that is not possible that that can't that won't happen um so um so that um so in one sense you know what's he doing they're trying to they're trying to seize the narrative and that's again something that regardless of what side of this um debate you might be doing this sort of thing might be considered to be sort of jumping uh maybe maybe um working against the sort of collegiality that was implied rather than than expressed uh um deliberately but um you know certainly um they're being very noisy about this and uh and every few days another couple of bishops seem to be releasing letters which is keeping it nicely in the press for them which is you know there's a sense in which there's a sort of coordinated action going here to keep a narrative of the church will change um and um uh the problem is uh you know what wh what is the church going to do um uh there there are a number of options um one of which being a sort of uh the, the, what, what stephen suggests and again we said that's probably unlikely to be um affirmed by synod um the bishops might try and bypass synod they might say um we're, we're not going to change the church of england's doctrine on marriage but we're not going to discipline people who bless same-sex relationships might be um well i should say sexual same-sex relationships um and that has problems as well, doesn't it? Because because effectively the, the 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 bishops surrender the concept of an Episcopal church. We become a Congregationalist church, like the Baptist Union, yeah. uh, but you know we're just with some people in silly hats. Um, and uh, because you know when when you you know at that point the bishops have basically surrendered all all authoritative teaching. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you could argue, Tom, that that's, you know, the, the, the horse is, her horse is bolted <laughs> and, and, you know, a long time ago. And this is just, I mean, to use another metaphor, uh, this is just our chickens coming home. This is our theological chickens coming home to roost, isn't it, really? Um, yeah. But the thing about this is, Tom, I think you highlight that thing about they've, they've done this um, not within the context of a, a agreed process, but they've unilaterally decided to do this. And they use language of, uh, you know, people who have this viewpoint will be honoured and they'll be accepted and they'll be. And, and Stephen Cross he's, even talks about Episcopal provision, meaning alternative oversight of bishops, which we already have for people who, who um, believe in uh, male only priesthood and uh, episcopate. But at the same time, um, number one, Stephen Croft says it's a, a justice issue in his in his uh, letter. And so I don't really see how he can say, on the one hand, there's a historic injustice here, but we're still going to honour the people who are who are committed to that historical injustice. And then the second thing is, I think it's really quite ingen disingenuous to, to just suddenly come out with this and then to say, oh, yeah, but we, we honour the people who, who disagree, because the implication of this is going to be. Uh, that people who hold to a traditional view, which is, by the way, still the teaching of the Church of England, uh, until it's until it's changed by by synod, um, it all it, what it's going to do is it's going to put it's going to be re remove the um, episcopal protection and covering from people who have a traditional view of marriage and human sexuality, and it's it's going to mean that it's harder 
for i mean the the, the point that archbishop Cranmer makes is that it's going to be harder <clears throat> for people who have that view to become bishops but it's also going to become harder for people to to get jobs as 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 priests because this this legitimizes the narrative that the church is moving in a particular direction and that this is a justice issue that we should have spoken sooner and regardless of what regardless of what is said about you know we should honor people who have the other view it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you say that because only one thing is going to happen and it's going to be that people who don't have a view which conforms to the culture will come under impre- increasing pressure either to conform or they will be marginalised. And that's exactly the point that Archbishop Cramer makes when he talks about Philip North. So Philip North is a um, a bishop, a suffragan bishop, so a sort of deputy bishop in the Church of England who does not affirm the ordination of women to the episcopate and to uh, the priesthood. And um, he was he was uh, offered the role of the uh, was the Bishop of uh, Sheffield, wasn't it? So he was chosen by the Crown Nominations Commission to be the Bishop of Sheffield. But he suffered such abuse uh, from people who who disagree with his position that he actually withdrew uh, his 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 um his candidacy, his candidacy for for that position, and and Cranmer writes here. If as, this is this is North speaking, right? So if as Christians we cannot relate to each other within the bounds of love, how can we possibly presume to transform a nation in the name of Christ? The highly individualized nature of the attacks upon me have been extremely hard to bear. Uh, in, indeed, the more that one is called a bigot, hater, or misogynist, or accused of advocating sacralized sexism, the one, the more one might be inclined to bury one's hand in he, sorry one's head in the sands of resignation. So the the point the point there is that we can talk about mutual flourishing and we can talk about love for each other and honoring each other and so on and so forth, but. but that is not the way it gets worked out in reality. And and Bishop, Archbishop Cameron actually he he's got a screenshot of a of, a, of some tweets here where um, somebody's somebody's um, retweeted uh, what looks like a sort of traditional response to the Archbishop's statement on. Oh no! Is this about this? I don't know actually. It, it's not about this. No, this is this is an older one. But the point is that. Um... Some of these uh, characters are still going, aren't they? Jeremy Pemberton quite famously lost his license to um, officiate because he entered into a gay marriage. Andrew Forshaw Kane is um, at the head of um, uh, arguments. Uh, yeah, oh, so sorry, just to just to uh, just to clarify then. So, so basically, somebody posted something that was sort of at the ma- mainstream and in line with the teaching of the Church of England on human yeah. sexuality, and then the, an account called the Church mouse wrote what is this about jeremy pemberton wrote that's what we're all wondering quite a piece of work a eh? and then he tweet he 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 copies in uh people like vicky beeching and stonewall uk and then andrew forshaw kane says oh ffs when are they leaving speaking about people who hold to the church's teaching on on marriage and sexuality please someone put us out of their misery so the the point is he's he, he's he's just saying the point that archbishop Cranmer is making and i assume archbishop Cam- Cranmer is actually liberal on this matter He's saying, look, you can't you can't realistically believe that we can we can we can have same sex marriage in the Church of England and not have a situation where basically you've got two groups of of mutually antagonistic people within the church. Uh, it's just it's just not it's just not it's not realistic. It's not honest to say that. And and to talk about alternative Episcopal oversight as well, to my mind, is just it's just it's getting to the point of absurdity now so we've got we've already got alternative episcopal oversight for for um for those who um who affirm a male only priesthood and episcopate if we have another set of alternative episcopal oversight that would mean logically that we'd need four different types of episcopal <laughs> oversight, wouldn't it we would, well you need you need something for um those who affirm who don't have, have a problem with women's ministry but do not uh, don't want same sex marriage to yeah. be blessed you'd need Something for those who do have a problem with women's Episcopal ministry, but don't mind uh, same-sex marriage, and there are a few of them. Uh, and you, yeah, you'd need four. Um, yeah, yeah. And do you need you need basically one which affirms both, one which denies both, one which affirms one and not the other, and then vice versa. I yeah. mean, it's 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 it, and then and then what happens when there's another major disagreement? Will we have a further Episcopal? Uh, that, of course, real issues. We need eight. We need, need eight. eight. Yeah, it would be two, it would be two um, <laughs> times two times two, wouldn't it? So, so yeah, we need yeah. eight different types of episcopal oversight. So, this is just this is just silly. You know, we can't we can't have this. And if this goes ahead, then it's clearly going to cause it. Mu- it must, I think, cause a, sp- a split. Some kind of 
critical split within the Church of England. I, I just can't see that. I can't see that it, well, anything else could happen. I mean, I, I, like I say, I don't think that. I mean, the thing is that they'll, they'll fudge it. They, they will have some sort of um, uh, the reduction in. They'll, they'll basically say, um, I suspect. We, we won't discipline priests who bless same-sex relationships. Yeah, that, that, that in itself will be seen as the critical move then, won't it, if, if that happens? Because that will, that will effectively legalise same-sex marriage in the Church of England. No, well, so, I mean, it depends. Conservatives, you... conservatives on this matter, people like Vaughan Roberts, won't like look at that and think, well, that's, you know, that's, not a, that's not some kind of critical move in in the in the affirmation of same sex marriage that would be it's, that would be de facto changing the the doctrine and practice of the church of england if that happens well i mean would it though i mean in practice so at some at some point tom it's going to at some point it's going to cause a split in the church this i think this matter i mean i don't know what's going to happen honestly i've got no idea what's going to happen but i think this matter it's looking to me like this is pushing all of this tension around you know liberalism and conservatism all of that tension, which has existed now for, you know, at least 60 years, but really, really longer, really, you know, 100 years or so. It's it's I think it's coming to a head over this issue of, of same sex marriage. I can't see how that how it's going to continue. I mean, I, I, mean I like I said, I don't think I'm not certain. We, I mean, each, each minister will have to think about it um, in their own way. I um uh, I'm not certain that they will change the officially change the doctrine of the Church of England now, whether or not that's sufficient to safeguard is another question. Um, uh, I, um, but in practice, there are already two churches going on anyway, aren't they? They just, you know, there, there are churches in the Church of England that I wouldn't go to. I wouldn't receive communion. I would consider myself to be out of communion. Yeah, but Tom, it would be a completely um, different matter. No, just, just um, consider consider it in this way, okay? So, say basically, some fudge happens and it becomes um, possible to uh, have same-sex marriages in the Church of England. Okay, there, there won't be same-sex marriages. Well, but there, 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 will, there will, there there will, will not be somewhere. there will not be a liturgy which says that um, two men can be in holy matrimony produced by the Church of England. They, that that that's not that that would require your two thirds majority in synod. But anyway, well, I don't think I don't think it would because I think there might be ways of doing it, such as with experimental liturgy and things like that. But but because you you can have experimental liturgy which is which is not passed you, through you, general. You synod. can't They're you can't just, have. Canon B12, you can't have experimental liturgy that, that, that is not in, 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 you know, it, it, in the same, in not, that's not, that, that's saying things that are not said by the Church of England. Okay, 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 anyway, so, okay, well, so, okay, so you say, basically you're saying it's not going to happen. I'm All I'm saying is just imagine that something happens like a fight yeah, 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 whereby, yeah. It, whereby it becomes possible. And I think that that is a, a reasonable assumption that, that that might happen at some point. Um, the, what that will mean is that um, the expectation of ministers who are not in, say, conservative evangelical churches is liable to change in quite an extreme way. I think it's it's fair to say, because then it will be an option um, as to whether or not you as a minister perform same sex marriages, essentially. So so if you if you then refuse then that i mean it, it doesn't take a genius to work out what's going to happen it means that um it means that a significant amount of posts and and um jobs in the church of england will just be completely closed to people who have oh, yeah. The, yeah. who have the who have the traditional view on this for example you will not be able to get a chaplaincy post in the church of england if this if this happens anywhere you know, you won't be able to have one in a school. You won't be able to have one in in the military. You won't be able to have one in a hospital or anywhere else. Because what they'll what they'll ask you at an interview is, would you be willing to perform same sex marriages? And if you say no, then then it will be well. There's the door, and that will go for many many parishes as well. So yeah. it will essentially have the effect. It will be like you know the situation with um, women's. Um, ordination now i don't i don't normally talk about this on the podcast because i like to keep things as, as sort of um as uh, mere christianity as possible but i'm i'm um i don't affirm, affirm women's ordination and i'm part of a i i have episcopal uh alternative episcopal oversight and um you know i've i've i have had some uh abuse um as a as a result of it but generally speaking not very much and and people are people are you know generally speaking decent to each other but nevertheless you are you are quite mar marginalized you're you're not part of the mainstream and so on and so forth you know i don't i don't really have a problem with that I'm, I'm absolutely fine but but if this happens then it will have the effect of 
of marginalizing us in a in a far far more extreme way than mm. the situation with with women's ordination because as far as the culture is concerned and that culture is reflected a lot in the church of england people who have a traditional view a christian view you know which which christians have had for 2000 years of human sexuality are you know bigoted and 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 hateful and and perpetrators of injustice and and so they're not they're not going to give people like that a job in their church are they no well no, i i do i i agree with you i mean i mean i think um I, I don't disagree with you if if that comes to pass I, my 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 main my main hope i guess more than anything else is is that that's that's not that, that's further than synod would would allow the bishops to go and that we'll end up we'll end up with some sort of situation where if you if you're hearing me out where effectively um there, there's no there's there's no liturgy but if you blessed a same sex relationship then you wouldn't be disciplined uh, the Church of England hasn't changed its point of view. It hasn't said that's allowed. It's just saying we're not going to discipline you if you do it. And I think that's the most likely thing that's going to happen. And um, in practice, like that already happens, Jamie. But in practice, that's already the case. Yeah, John. I just think um, you know. I just uh, think that that's not that's not the end game. Of no, it's not the it's not the, the end game. Um, but but like um, Stephen Croft and John Inge, that's not what they but, want. But they, they but want they, the wholesale but, change in the doctrine. But, but they certainly do, but they're not going to get it. They can't get it because it would require, as as Ian Paul notes, it would require completely detaching the Church of England from its historic formularies. It would no longer be the Church of England if you define the Church of England. What is it? Yeah, Tom, I just yeah. I mean, I I just think it's a um, little bit naive to say that it's not going to happen and just think you know and just stop there because they clearly believe it is going to happen otherwise they wouldn't have released these statements they've obviously got some kind of plan so so i suspect what they're, what, what they're the reason they're releasing these statements is in order to um is, is in order to prepare for a, for a middle ways fudge so that, so that the conservatives go well that's not as bad as it could be um I suspect that you know the cynic in me says that's what they're trying to do, um, and I and I don't I, you know I think it's a bad thing if discipline is released. Like I say, I, I believe in an Episcopal church, not in a Congregationalist church, uh, and um, I, I um, uh, but but I could probably you know continue ministering in a faithful diocese under that fudge in the end because 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 leaving would require me to abandon my flock, and that would be really troubling. Um, there would be a point at which I would have to leave um, where I couldn't in all integrity stay, but I'm not certain it would be there. Now, I mean, ac accuse me of, of falling falling foul of salami slicing, if you will, because I'm aware that that's the problem. But, um, you know, it's it, the, the, you know on, on the ground in my parishes, that wouldn't change things because I would just say, oh, you know, I, that's not what I do. But I think it does have the capacity to change things on the ground. I have to say because it would it would change your parishioners view of of the church and the church's the church's ministry and function i'm not saying it would sort of change it sort of critically or anything like that but i do i do think it would change things um anyway we should we should probably leave it there for now i mean this this obviously is going to continue i mean the thing i feel about this just as a sort of final comment is i really think that this is a very significant moment in terms of um as i say that 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 tension and contradiction really that exists within the church of england is 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 um is rising to the surface now and i do think at some point it's gonna there will be a there will be a critical moment where the church goes in one or two to one of two directions i just i just can't see how this can continue yeah so we'll see won't we tom <clears throat> we'll see we will see i think in the end we will see uh, but I, I trust in god you know he built this he's built the church and in, in the end, the church will continue. Of course, the Church of England may go apostate, but the church will continue. Um, yeah, amen. Should we do some uh, question the Rev? A, a very, a very quick question the Rev. Go on. We've got well, according to your schedule, we've got eight minutes. So is that all right? That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so Tom, having had that quite intense conversation, it's now time for some of this. Thank you very much, everyone, for your lovely questions of the Revs this week. Um, question from Ian. My question, how do we, in inverted commas, faith and freedom dwellers outside the norm, I'm oh, sorry, I almost played something else there for a minute, um, continue to grow and increase our tribe? Um, meanwhile, I've shared the merch page with my family for Christ Mass. Um, I think he means Christmas there. Um, now, um, that's good of you, Ian. Thank you very much. www.irreverentpod.com merch. 
uh, for your merch needs. Um, look, I, I want to answer this one first. And remember, Tom, this is quick fire now. Quick fire, yeah? Um, I don't want to increase the faith and freedom dwellers tribe. I want to grow the church. So that's that's what I like to do. And that's what I think all Christians need to do. Uh, we are united around Christ and not around um, uh, things that we have in common politically, even though those things are sometimes extremely important. So that's the way I would urge uh, Ian to think about it. Uh, we're not united around our response to COVID or anything else, but around Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a really, really important point. And uh, I believe it. So I would say uh, live a Christian life of holiness, godliness, and uh, and bold and courageous evangelism. So that would be my suggestion. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, we're not, you know, faith and freedom is not is not our um, it's our tagline, but it's not our it's no, not it's our, not our tagline. It's not faith, no, it's not faith, not fear is our tagline. Faith, not fear. That's it. Is our tagline. Good. Yeah. Uh, which fear, yeah. fear, not fear, is, is is a freedom in itself. But yeah, um, I think um, uh, the, um, the, 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 the 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 that's best grown. Because it's a, it's a good outcome of God's kingdom, in a sense, where people of are living in freedom. Um, of course, the freedom, true freedom, is is serving God. Yeah. Um, so um, I've I've got I've got no time for the idea that people should be at home, not going to church, and united with other Christians over the internet, over their, um, you know, their their abhorrence of what happened over COVID. Now, I have the same political idea, but I I, I believe in the church. And um, I, 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 I shared some thoughts actually of this about this on my Substack account, which you can go on. Um, you can find my Substack. Uh, you just I can't remember the address, but uh, JamieFranklinSubstack.com, I think it is. It's called Good Things, and I, I wrote a sermon about on for All Saints Day where I say, shared some thoughts about this. Uh, the church, believe in the church, uh, believe in Christ. Uh, it's not about us as individuals at home with the right political opinions, um, as important as as, as um, these things are. What are your thoughts on the Bishop of Oxford wishing to lift a ban on same sex marriage? <laughs> We've already talked about that. Why don't uh, Protestants have to confess to a priest? Good question. Well, you have to. <laughs> here we go. Uh, here we go. Um, you, you don't have to confess to a priest because your sins are forgiven by faith in Christ alone. Um, uh, the act of confessing to a priest is potentially a helpful, helpful spiritual tradition that you might wish to do, but you don't have to do it. Um, uh, I think it can be helpful to confess, uh, certainly to have um, accountability structures, um, by which I mean people who you talk to about um, where you're struggling and uh, who can pray with you together, but it doesn't have to be to a priest, uh, uh, but um, it could be. Uh, but you don't have to confess because your sins are forgiven by faith in Christ. Yeah, broadly, broadly speaking, I agree with that, actually, Tom. There was there was remarkably little polemic in that answer. So, you know, obviously in the Roman Catholic Church, people do have to confess to the priest, but um, confession is made available in certain parts of the Protestant Church, uh, such as uh, the Anglo-Catholic part of the Anglican Church, uh, because it's a spiritually beneficial sacramental practice, um, which I, I personally do recommend very, very highly. Uh, and it's important to remember as well that it is part of it is a legitimate part of the Protestant tradition. Uh, for example, Martin Luther uh, believed in uh, the practice of confession. But, you know, that's that's by the by. Um, let's have another one. Uh, liturgical decorum during mass in the Anglo-Catholic tradition. <laughs> well, I, I, can, I can get political here if you want, Jamie. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> I answer this one. Uh, could be quite confusing for people new to the church. Sitting, standing, kneeling, crossing oneself and turning to certain parts of the church can be quite alienating. One does not know what to do. Uh, what to do when one can feel a bit left out, but getting to know can be a hard process. I think it can put people off, feels exclusive to some. How can I encourage someone in interested in attending Anglo-Catholic Mass to get past their sense of exclusion? What is the liturgical purpose of what we do and how does it enhance our worship? That's so, right. Well, that's a lot of questions, questions there. Big uh, question. it's, it's not just, a, just a, I want to throw one in, Jamie. It's not just an Anglo-Catholic no. problem. Like, um, no. uh, certainly not. I mean, I think, I think, um, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no um, guitar uh sort of service led kind of you know free song free singing praise charismatic type stuff uh it's not me uh but if you went to one of those services it can also be similarly disorientating when do i put my hands up do i you know do i go forward for the altar call do i you know etc cetera, etc cetera. there's always um, whenever there's liturgy and, and sort of custom there are barriers um yeah of course. I mean, what, what I always tell people is I say, look, just 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 don't worry about it. You know, just come and experience it. Just if you want to just sit there and just just watch if you like, just let it wash over you. And and as you as you immerse yourself in it, you gradually get to understand the rhythms and you gradually feel more confident uh, to participate. But, you know, uh, first first go. Don't, don't worry too much. You know, people aren't watching you. Just just come and, and, and experience it. Um, 
that's that's my honest advice which i i often i often give to people and you'll realize that it's wonderful and uh that it's it's uh it's it's life-giving um i won't say too much more because as i say i don't want to um i want to keep it mere christianity as much as possible uh yeah. next one what is the symbolism of having yew trees in churchyards i tell you there is one i think i, I think they're they're often yeah. pagan trees aren't they they're sort of ancient ancient sources of um and the churches are built next to them to sort of fertility yeah, yeah i don't know there's not really anything they're, they're quite nice trees i guess don't eat the berries <laughs> yeah there's another one here yeah. uh this is the last one we've got two minutes what is the spiritual significance of us having a prime minister who neither swore his oath on of office on the bible and he performed a ritual to idols on the doorstep of number 10 before entering and there's a video of rishi sunak i think he's putting some little candles down in front of the door of Number ten Downing Street. Well, it's not entirely clear what he's doing in that. Do you know, do, on the one hand, um, on the one hand, obviously, uh, we'd rather, as we said before, rather a Christian prime minister because uh, God blesses um, faith. His, his faithful in, in many ways. I think. Um, uh, on the other hand, there are plenty of op- plenty of examples of, of righteous non-Christian rulers in the Bible. Cy- Cyrus being one who who um, who released the Jews from captivity. Uh, despite being, you know, sp- spoken of quite favourably in the Bible, despite being a Babylonian and worshiping the Babylonian gods, um, so I don't know. Um, it's uh, and God uses. Is that, is that right? Is that right? I think, I think, it's, think, I think, it think that's right. I mean, he's, um, he's he's spoken of as God's instrument, but I'm not sure. That, I'm not that's... sure that I'm not sure that they're sort of commended, uh, even in spite of them being pagan. Not idolaters. commended, maybe, but you know, they're they're, they're used used by God. As far as really, I was guessing. Yeah, at, okay. All right, there are yeah, plenty fine. of there are plenty of Assyrian. Babylonian and Egyptian uh, kings that are used by God, despite the fact they are pagan um, idolizers and uh, idolaters. So, um, you know, there is a significance there, um, but I, I kind of take a 1 Corinthians view in this in the end. Like, I, I don't believe that the pagan deities that Hindus worship are, are real deities. They have no power. Um, they are, um, they, 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 he may have invoked them, but they, they have no real meaning. No, I mean, I have a, I have a different view. I have to say, Tom. Um, having, I mean, uh, I spent some time in Malaysia when I was um, about nineteen. I might have been twenty actually, and um, saw a lot of the Hinduism that goes on there. And I think there is a deep, I think there is a deep spiritual darkness actually associated with hum- uh, with Hinduism. I have to say, uh, I don't know how much of a, I don't know how committed um, uh, Rishi Sunak is to to his Hinduism. But to be honest with you, I hope it's not much. And I, and I, I think that. Um, I think that it is significant that we have a Hindu prime minister um, because it is a it's a religion that's foreign to this to this nation and um, it's not it's not it's not our it's not our religion it's not the, the religion of this nation which is Christianity uh, it still is you know we still have an established church um, we still have well so yeah I mean but mind you we've had atheist prime ministers and they're probably no more or less probably less inclined to support the establishment of the church than. Yeah, yeah, but but there is a there is I I think there is still a material difference between atheism and somebody who's a Hindu. I mean that's an interesting question, isn't it, from a spiritual perspective? But I think, you know, there's the atheist secularist mindset as well. There is there is no God, there is no spiritual world, and all I have to do is sort of live for myself and you know and and live for material things, or not necessarily live for myself, but live for just material things. Whereas the whereas the 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 person who is a, a Hindu or has another religion is literally worshiping other gods and i i do see a, i do see a significant difference between those two things yeah. um I I think, go, it, was it was it saint augustine who uh, anyways no well let's well let's stop then i won't i won't further venture into <laughs> um i've got to do go wanna, do you want to do um, a quick prayer before have you got time yeah, for a quick prayer of course yeah i, I could pray go on, go on, Tom, you go, do a quick heavenly prayer. father bless the listeners of this podcast bless them and bless all those who we've spoken about especially bless that poor lady on a on a, on a gantry with uh, discernment and uh, quell her fears may her may she know your love and light uh, and not the darkness of panic um, we pray that rishi sunak comes to uh, know your son our lord and savior jesus christ as well um, that he may be turned from darkness into light um, and finally we pray your blessing upon all who have listened um, may this have been edifying for them amen amen all right, Tom. Good. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks everyone Goodbye. for listening. Bye now. 